And I guarantee you it will always appeal to your flesh. But look here. No, have mercy. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. In other words, God is saying, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Is anybody reading what God's saying here? Every morning doeth he bringeth his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. I hope you grab that in, in beginning to number your day. You can go down a path till you get to the point you have absolutely no shame. You don't care who see you. You don't care who know it. And sometimes you tell them, so what? But when they get to that point, you, God told you, don't, don't cast your pearl before swine. He, didn't, he said, if you got a brother out there, just mark him. Don't treat him as an infidel, but pray for him. And, and, and then if you keep on going and the devil get enough of him, like Paul said, maybe when that, when that devil gets enough whooping up on his head, he'll come back or she'll come back and then greet them and build them back up again. Don't point out everything they did wrong. They already know that. Do like Jesus did to you. He, he took you right where you were. And that's all we can do is give them the word where they can accept it. Now look what he said. God telling you, I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste. That none passes by their cities are destroyed. So that there is no man that is there in none inhabitant. In other words, God said that when I come back this next time, I ain't coming back as a babe. I'm coming back with, with an iron rod in my hand and I'm going to clean house. Just like I did it, when I had to destroy the first earth age, I wiped out everything. Wasn't nothing left. No man, nothing. Jeremiah 24, read it for yourself. So we got to understand God is a, that's why we don't want to stand before his aim. Now this last verse, he said, I said, being God speaking, don't they know how good I am? I'm not here to hurt them. I said, surely thou wilt fear me. Thou wilt receive instruction so their dwellings should not be cut off. Are you beginning to put the words together, your dwelling place? In other words, you keep, I'm the one supporting that dwelling place. You're going to get so far out there that I got to cut you off. Well, I didn't write this, God did. Yes, Lord. Should not be cut off. Howsoever, I punished them. But they rose early and corrupted all their doings. Now who did it? Did God, did God try to, whom I love, what did I say? I, I will chase him. But some folks, that it, God say, after I chase them, I try to get their attention, they just go off and just keep on doing their thing. We have to know my days, we can't point fingers at them. I, I know, I, y'all may have thought I was, I picked up all that, you got some folks out there Way out there in your own mind. Don't worry about it. Yes. Yes, One of my goddaughters, I kept trying to tell her, just leave it alone. Get your hands off of it. Yes. Then she, her daughter called and said, I'm coming home, Mom. This boy ain't all of that in a bag of chips. He's beating on me, and I had enough. You understand? Because the word of God was in her. That was just what the Lord said. You train them up in the way they should go. And when they're old, they can't depart. It doesn't matter. We, we might, they might not come back when we want them. But God's going to bring them back because he said he would. Anybody heard what the Lord said this morning? Hmm? 
That's why he told us in Psalm 39 and 4, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days. What is it that I may know how frail I am? I don't care if a dude, it, it hurt me because I understand I play football myself. I know how aggressive you can become. But I thank God that he controlled it. Amen. A pro football player killed his girlfriend, then went back, knew exactly, just didn't care anymore. Went back to the coach and, and the people that owned the team, a part of it was, I don't know who it was, whether it was the general manager, whatever, thanked him and then right in front of them blew his brains out. But that can happen when you start going down that slippery slope. Yes, yes. When you're not thinking about numbering your days. Yes. See, when we do the best we can, I want y'all to underline this verse. I'm almost through with it because we got to have communion. Uh, it says this, Deuteronomy 32. Come on with me there. Yes. And... 36. Now, within that same chapter, you'll find the song of Moses in there, too. That's a good one. Yeah, good. <laughs> I'm not going to get you. I better hold myself down now. Listen now. This is, this is, this is, this is not going to change. This is what God said. For the Lord, Yahweh, your daddy, shall judge his people. But now, look at the Lord, have mercy. The conjunction here and repent himself for his servants. He said he's going to repent himself. He know we done done wrong. But when he justifies us, just if he just, Lord God, <laughs> just as if you never done it. Because you have repented from, from what you've done, so therefore, whatsoever you sow, what did he promise? You shall receive. So he repented back to his, for his servant. When he seeth that their power is gone. In other words, you surrendered all that you have to God. You didn't find out I can't do what I thought I could. Well. And there is none shut up or left. I want y'all to let that soak in. I'm going to take care of my own. That's what that means. Even up to the end. That speaks of end time. Yes, Lord. Doesn't matter. The ones that messed up, they gone. So you don't realize Satan will be shut up for a thousand years and then they're going to release and y'all not hearing nobody. Yes, yes. You studied the word, you begin to put those things together. You see what I mean? Lord have mercy. And see, what we don't never study to realize that not only, we, we heard the verse that that in, in thy presence is fullness of joy and pleasure forevermore. But now we got to take it up a notch here. Y'all don't mind me taking it letting the Lord take it up a notch? When we get to the end, not only when we get to the end, let's see in Psalm 36 and 8, let's see what happens then. If you ain't got to write it down. They shall, mean all of those who repented and, and really took stock of how they're living down here, shall be abundantly satisfied with fatness. That's the Hebraism. You can read it again in Isaiah 1. He said, if you do well, you shall eat the fatness of the land. It's a Hebraism. In other words, even there and now, God is showing you, just be mindful of what you're doing. Of thy house, meaning God's, when he come down here, and thou shalt make them drink, listen now, of the river of thy pleasures. God Almighty. 
So if you've been over in Revelation 12, you see a certain river coming out there. Y'all yeah. Yeah. <laughs> know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a river of pleasure. Right. And on one side, it's got a tree with 12 manner of fruit yes. Yes. for the healing yes. of a nation. Yes, Lord. Yes, I Lord. hope I ain't. Yes, Lord, Lord, have mercy. That's all right, Pastor. Teach over here. Woo! See, we, we must do that. Now listen, listen, listen. Let's go back to Psalm 9. I'm trying to get finished. Let's go to verse 13. It says, return, O Lord, O Dad. How long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servant. We just read that. God will do that. If you ask him, you know you done blew it. That's a, re re just, I know I done wrong, but Lord, repent. Yes, Lord. Repent thee concerning thy servant. You got two witnesses that ought to make it so. That's what the book says. You got to understand. No, none of us are perfect. That's none perfect but the Father. Amen. But all we got to do is do everything. We don't understand what that decent and in order. Yes, sir. If I'm in church, I shouldn't be thumbing. If I'm in church, I shouldn't be passing notes. You got all day to do that. Because the minute you let that take your mind off of what God is saying, not me, but God is saying, you might lose something that you Amen. need later on. Amen. Amen. You can believe it if you want to, but oh, glory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said, oh, glory. Yes. Ah, uh, no. Let's go to 14. It says, oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy. Yes, Lord. See, everybody walk around here like, you know, folks saying that we got depression. All you got to do is ask the Lord to satisfy you with his mercy and it's gone. How do you know you can get some mercy? Because he told you my mercies are renewed daily. Anybody read the Bible over there in Lamentations, huh? <laughs> oh, Lord. All we got to do, that we may what? Rejoice and be glad all our days. Are you seeing the significance of, 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 of just trying to do the best you can, numbering your days, and, and begin, begin to do the best that you can? Nobody say, didn't say you couldn't go this or you couldn't do that. But wherever you go, like I told you, one of my favorite verses, whatever I do, do it all to the glory of God. I don't care if 36, 24, 36 come. I haven't found that much that good because I'm a, I want to drink of that river of pleasure. Not be soaked up in the in that pleasure like that woman said over in, in, in Proverbs. And like they tried to deal with Joseph. My husband, no. Yes. I got the bed perfumed. I got all kind of rose petals on that. And she didn't mix no words. She said, come lie with me. The Bible's real. Yes, Lord. Yes, it is. That means it, it, we have a real relationship with our God. Right. Then we don't have any problems that He can't handle. Yes, Lord. There's a lot of things we can't handle. He said, Oh, satisfy me. Oh, satisfy us early. I mean, we need it all the time, somebody. I don't think they understand how good God wants to be to his people, but it's up to us to begin to read his word. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Have you noticed? One, 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 one psalm it would behoove us all to study with great emphasis on it, but I'm only going to give you one verse on that. Uh, psalm 103 and verse 5. Now, when you grab the significance of what God's saying, I, I know that all the world is especially, uh, I won't call it intimacy, but on the other sides of the fence, they, they, they talk about whatever. You got to perform. No, no, no. Or you got to do this to do. I know we got young folks in there, so I got to watch them. Hey, when, when God unites you as one, 
You will never be worrying about which one is satisfied first. You always want to satisfy the other one, and it doesn't necessarily mean the intimate part of it. You look for the best for them because God is looking for the best for you. And when you understand that and, and, and you live for him, that's why God told a man to love thy wife as, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. It didn't mean you necessarily have to die, but you must die to your own will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And treat her with the respect because God brought her to you. And when a woman realizes that God brought her to him, then she's able to act as a woman of God. Then she need to read Proverbs 31. Am I right about it? Oh, Lord, I, I better leave that alone. All you got to do is read his word. It'll show you how to do yes, it will, what a godly woman should be about. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Now, let's see what all, this, all the satisfaction you need. Let's see where it comes from. It says, who satisfy thy mouth with good things. That's a Hebraism. I mean, I'm going to give you nothing but good. Be it food, well, life. Encounters and all of that, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. A figure of speech. God has already told us how to eat. Leviticus 11. You see what I mean? What we're supposed to be. And if we do that, the etymology of it said, if you eat the food that I told you to eat, I will satisfy your mouth with good things. And that food will begin to renew you like an eagle. And you won't get old and wrinkled real fast. Is that plain enough for you? See, that's what he's talking about. I laid it out. Now, now, yeah, we're going to get out of the Big Macs and all that, but with moderation. He even told you that whatever you do, do it in moderation. Don't let it run over. Lord, have mercy. My God. I'm trying to stop you, but I'm trying to get this thing done if I can. Let's go to 15. Make us glad. That's it. Make us glad. Yeah, that just make me glad, Lord. I ain't feeling too good today. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast stirred our nest. God doesn't afflict you, but if you learn to stir our nest. And the years when, wherein we have seen two more. You've had some problems. Yes. That's what it's talking about. That's what that means. Let thy work appear unto thy servant. Oh, my God. If we could, I'd be able to blow our mind if he really showed us every day what he's done for us. He said, let that work. How many times the Lord didn't save your life and you didn't even know it? You see what I mean? And thy glory unto their children. See, when you live right, your child will see the glory of God. Yes. Godly parents, it says, and as a blessed thing. When you really break down what the word say, when you got godly parents, you might not lack all the things they require you to do, but you're a blessed young person. Yes, sir. I thank God every day now that I've gotten older for my godly parents. Didn't always understand with my mind. I used to tell her, you go with that Bible stuff again. But she's planting seeds. I, I figured that out now. All right. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Yes, Lord. Have mercy. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Just do what the Lord tell you to do, and you plant seeds. Now, I, I, I got my nephew. And my line ain't what, what mud like that. She's she going to let you know. So when you get out of pocket, she's going to tell you about that word. Mm -hmm. I got a witness in here. Now look, look at and the 17th verse. And let the beauty 
of the Lord our God be upon us. Wow. You mean that you and I can walk around daily with the countenance and and, and there's another scripture in that says that he will beautify you with holiness. He will give you a, a, a garment of praise. Didn't he say that? For the spirit of holiness. He wants it. It also tells you that put on Christ. And we began to do that. Put on the whole arm of God. Yes, sir. I can't tell you all of it, but I do it every day that I get dressed. I have little things. Folks might call it crazy. I don't care. But I put it on. And I have a good day when I do it. Okay? And don't y'all try to ask my wife what it is, because she ain't no tell you. <laughs> and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Why? And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. See, when that glory of God is upon you, you are the best worker on your job. You are the best worker in your home. And reminds you that I want them to see the goodness of the Lord well, all over you. Well, well, hmm. yes, Lord. I don't think y'all hear what yes, the Lord is saying. <laughs> is how we tie these two chapters together when we go back to Psalm 27 and 4. Yes, we've been in Psalm, Psalm 27. Y'all remember that? Yes. Are you at that stage from numbering your days when you say one thing? Yes, Lord. One thing. Lord, do no pastor. I said one thing. One thing. Have I desired, very yes, personal, Lord. Lord, have mercy, come get him. One thing have I desired of the Lord, Daddy, Yahweh, that I will seek after that I may, what, dwell in the house of the Lord yes. all the days of my life. Yes, to behold, what, the beauty are you beginning to see what the word, the beauty of the Lord? Yes. And to inquire in his temple. Yes. While you're down here, you need to ask questions. When you get up there, I make you answer them all, but when you ask them up there, buddy, you get all the answers well, you want. Yeah. Let me close this out and get a little happy right now. Now, let's finish this out. The works, you know what I mean? To establish thou the works of our hands upon us. Meaning God will give you the wisdom, the knowledge to do your job better than anybody else. Yeah. Listen now. The works of our hands. Plain and simple. Two times. Establish thou it. Some of you ought to read that before you go to work. You might get a promotion. Lord, I don't, I'm just telling y'all, it's Lord have mercy. And I'm going to read this last verse. Some of us need peace in our home. And we just read about what works in us, and then we just read that. So go with me as I close with Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26, verse 12. Listen to this now. If you want peace on your job, peace in your home, peace wherever you go, you can't get it by your works. Mm. Not at all, Pastor. Not at all. They've been trying to get peace treaties and con. They've been that it don't work. They blow them up every time they get them. To, hey, but here's something that works, Lord. Thou wilt obtain peace for us. For thou also hast 
wrong. All our works in us. Underline it. You, y'all heard me make this statement. You can't bust a grave. But every good work that happens in your life, you got it right here. Who does it? It's just that simple. Why don't you love me? Why don't you live for him? Yes, Lord. And when you live for him, then you show up with no joy. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for the privilege to serve you. Yes, Lord. All asleep.